this will be short and right to the point. Abracadabra, I'm a woman. Voila, it is so. This is pretty much what gender and queer theory claim is possible. This may seem like an unfair characterization, but because they assert that gender, and even sex, is linguistically and performatively constructed and not a biological fact, one's gender and sex only need to be declared in order to be true. Because of this, equating it with ab abracadabra is literally true and accurate. Abracadabra comes from the Aramaic phrase avracadabra, which means I will create as I speak. In this case, we can add the further superpower that woman can mean whatever I want it to mean, which essentially means that it means nothing in particular. Thus, the blank stares and stammering in response to Matt Walsh's famous question, what is a woman? Because so-called reality is merely linguistically constructed, according to queer theory, I can deconstruct whatever has been asserted as true by the oppressing class and assert whatever I want, with no obligation to provide a rationale rooted in reality. Abracadabra pretty much covers it. And by the authority and force of this implicit magical incantation, we are all obligated to embrace this new construction of truth and transform society to boot, or else we are to be hoisted on our own dissenting petards in the public square and pelted with tomatoes, if not stones. No, abracadabra doesn't work. There are things we can't magically change. We can't fly or live without breathing. We can't survive naked in extreme temperatures. If we don't eat, we will starve. We can't avoid our own eventual death. And no, we can't become the opposite sex. Okay, this being said, I believe that adults should have the right to identify and present themselves however they want. Adults who wish to, with informed consent, should be able to have chemical and surgical procedures to make their bodies correspond to their internal sense of their identity. Trans people should also have every right that everyone else is entitled to and not be subject to mistreatment or abuse. At the same time, where society makes provision for sexual dimorphism, for instance, in terms of protected spaces for women, changing rooms, athletics, prisons, etc., abracadabra should not be a magical incantation with a power to erase these distinctions and violate the rights of actual biological women. Compromise solutions should be sought that preserve the rights of women and maximize transgender accommodation, but not at the expense of reality and other people's rights. Furthermore, we should be very careful about abracadabra when it comes to children and adolescents, especially when it leads to puberty blockers and surgical interventions. Children are prone to magical thinking. Becoming an adult is a process of gradually contending with reality, which is not helped when magical thinking is affirmed. Eventually, if they don't figure it out themselves, children need to be told that there is no Santa Claus, Tooth Fairy, or Easter Bunny hiding eggs. We might also ponder this. If gender and sex are socially constructed and not biologically determined, according to queer theory, what is the need or justification for permanent physical alterations, especially with children who cannot yet comprehend the future ramifications? For children, it's not informed consent. It's like prescribing medicine to someone and giving them a pamphlet written in a foreign language that details the side effects. In practice, it's actually worse than that. Gender-affirming care doesn't even provide the pamphlet, let alone in the patient's language. If having to be one sex or the other is oppressive, then we can blame it on nature. It's not merely the arbitrary construction of an oppressive culture. Culture can allow people to pretend that they're free of the constraints of nature by simply saying abracadabra. Culture can allow broad freedom for how men and women choose to be in the world. We can treat gender non-conforming people with kindness and respect. We can do this much. But <clears throat> when culture coerces other people to reject reality and adopt magical thinking, 
particularly with something so fundamental to being human, we set a precedent for a very dangerous path. What laws of nature will we next be required to disregard in service to immature visions of unlimited freedom dissociated from reality? If our creations are antagonistic to the need to contend with reality, then those creations will not endure for long. Even nature doesn't keep all of its creations. That's evolution. Culture both contends with reality and creates it. That's what, And what we create is mostly in service to contending. If we start to believe that culture only creates reality, which doesn't otherwise exist, and that we can dismiss nature and create whatever we want, nature will soon enough allow us to eliminate ourselves. In our grandiosity, we will believe we have transcended nature, when in fact we have just trashed the very means it has provided us for survival. You're entitled to your own opinion, but I don't think that the extinction of the human species is something we ought to facilitate. I know, I know, that's hyperbolic as hell, <clears throat> but I do believe that if we think we can ignore or dismiss the laws and parameters of nature through the power of abracadabra, our, eventually, our eventual fate is clear. We won't survive. Let's not go down that path. That's it for now. So long. Till next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.